Hello and welcome to the David Carrier Show. I'm David Carrier, your family's personal attorney, and you have found the place where we talk about estate planning, elder law, real estate, and business law. So give us a call, why don't you? 616-774-2424. That'll get you right to the studio. And uh, we'll get your question, comment, or concern on the air. That's if you're wondering about wills, trusts, or probate. How do you beat the high cost of long-term care? Uh, you know the usual drill. We also deal with real estate and uh, and business law. So, got a question about the things that people have questions about. Well, when, <laughs> what could it, you know, really, seriously, what could it hurt? Give us a, uh, give us a call, 616-774-2424. Uh, so I've got, I've got a good reason to be uh, happy this morning. Not that not that you guys care, um, but uh, I had my first uh, grandchild was born last night. Yeah, I don't we don't know the, the little nipper's name. It's a it's a boy, uh, and we didn't know that till uh, well till about five thirty this morning, I guess. Um, that's what I found out. Um, <laughs> so um, so yeah, I'm, I, I hear I hear it's a good thing having grandkids. Um, you know, all the fun, none of the work. Uh, that, that That's the way it's been pitched to me. So we'll uh, we'll we'll find out about that. So uh, only happy questions. Well, I don't care. You know, happy questions, not so happy questions. Whatever kind of questions you got, now's the time to call 616-774-2424. And we'll, uh, you know, we'll knock those out of the park for you. That's if you have a question about wills, trusts, probate. Uh, I've got a, um, I've got a uh, thing from a lawyer, lawyer sent in you know, retired lawyer. And, uh, oh my goodness. It's just, you know, it's one of those where it's like, Hey, I'm going to break the, you know, fraternal bonds of, uh, attorney brotherhood or some, some nonsense like this and tell you how it's really going. And it's like, you know, what? Anyway, I'll, 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 uh, I'll read that to you in the next segment. Uh, I promise you. And, uh, we'll get that on. But now that you now that we got a grandkid, <laughs> um, what I'd like to do is just spend a little bit of time um talk about your grandkids and uh or your kids if you're if you're really uh you're really up at uh at this hour uh, listening to the show. <laughs> I bet just more grandparents and you know. Anyway, here's the here's the deal. When you um just a couple of things, just you know, if you've got a new kid. Right. If you've got a baby, then there are some things that you need to do first and foremost, first and foremost. Right. You're still a little bit younger there if you just had the kid. I mean, if it's your grandparents, it's different. But um, get some term life insurance, will you please? It doesn't matter what quality of term life insurance you get. You just got to get it. Get a ton of it. OK, it's cheap for you younger for you younger folks. You know, not for me, but for you, it's cheap. All right. And, and get some crappy ass insurance company. It's OK, because here's the deal. <laughs> it's the deal with life insurance. Mass Mutual, New York Life, MetLife, all the rest of the big players, right? They cannot have a situation where life insurance policies are questionable. Are you with me on this? So that if a life insurance and this has always been true. If like Mutual Benefit Life was this huge life insurance company, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 years ago, and they made promises they couldn't keep, and eventually they went bust. Everybody got paid, especially life insurance policies got paid, and eventually everybody else got paid. Why? Because the big life insurance companies don't want it, uh, don't want the reality to be, okay, and they're willing to go a long way to make sure that when you buy life insurance, you can't come back at their sales guy and say, hey, what about all those failed life insurance companies? Now they rate the uh, they rate them, you know, reliability and stuff like that, you know, AAA and blah, blah. And that's all good. That's all good. I'm not saying don't buy from Mass Mutual. My my dad had policies from Mass Mutual and New York Life, both. And they paid off like bang, no problem. OK, but if you're thinking, all right, if you're thinking, oh, you know, I can't afford those uh, big expensive companies. Don't worry about it. The key is the death benefit because it's not likely you're going to die, right? That's not likely. But if you do die and you leave the little the little nipper with, with two cents to their name or you do it wrong, 
Now you've really screwed up. Okay. I mean, you've totally screwed up. Let's face it. The uh, older folks, when older folks die, right. Or the, the plan kind of planning that we're talking about here is all about making sure that your lifetime of work and saving counts for something that it means something. All right. But we're assuming Right. That you've worked and you've saved and you've done those good things. You paid this off. You've you know, you've built up capital. You know, you've you've done the good thing. That's what this is all about. Right. Making sure that your life reflects your actual life. When, if when you need long term care. Right. That you're not. Oh, I don't have anything. You know, oh, I got to take whatever the state is willing to give me. I got to take the government cheese. Well, maybe you don't want the government cheese. All right. <laughs> maybe you want that. You know, maybe you want Cracker Barrel. I don't know. Uh, but if you do, you should be able to afford it. Because why? Because you worked really hard. That's why. You shouldn't just blow it out the door, throw it out the window. No. You hang on to it. That's that's the point. But let's face it, okay? What if you screw up? I'm talking to most of you guys out there. What if you screw up? What if your parents screw up their estate plan? All right, you're an adult. And your parents screwed up their estate plan. Who does the burden fall on? It falls on you, okay? Because you just threw away a lifetime of savings and good habits and keeping promises and all the rest of that stuff, right? In very short order. I mean, we're at twelve to 15,000. I don't see hardly any long-term care facility, any skilled nursing facility anyway, that's less than 400 bucks a day, 450 bucks a day. That's what it is. And everybody's coming up to it. It's a It's an ongoing process, okay? I mean, that's just the reality. Go shop it. If you don't, if you don't believe me, you know, believe your own eyes. Google it. Okay. And what you'll see, understand, you'll see a daily rate that's usually a semi-private room. And it doesn't <laughs> they know how to play the game too. And it doesn't include all the extras, you know, like sheets and pillowcases and stuff like that. Okay. So go in. You don't believe me. Don't believe me on any of this stuff. If I tell you something, don't believe it. Go check it. It's easy to check. Easy to check, please. You know, and don't come back. Oh, you said this. and blah, blah, blah. Hey, it's all go check it. You don't believe me? Don't believe me. I'm, I'm cool with it. I have no problem. I would. Inc that's why, you know, and I do this newspaper stuff. Right. So every week you get, you know, Dave Carrier's view of the world called the Elder Law Reporter. And uh, uh, in, yeah, that's me in your newspaper. And uh, uh, one of the things we do in the Elder Law Reporter, um, whenever we make any kind of sort of controversial claim at all about numbers or anything else, is I put the sites right in there. You know, it's almost like a legal brief. It's like, hey, go check out this website from the Federal Reserve Board of Governors if you don't believe me. Don't believe me. I mean, why, you know, why would I be any, why would I have any more credibility than anybody else after being here, you know? live and local for the last almost 20 years, 15 or two. I don't even know how long it's been. <laughs> it's been more than 15, what, 16, 17 years anyway? That's a long time. That's a long time. But don't believe me. I don't want you to. Go check it out. It's easy. But anyway, here's my point. When you're planning your estate, we're worried about you. Okay? You already had your life, right? Most of it. Not all of it. And the best is yet to come. Believe that. But you have lived, you know, a good life and all that. And you've done the good things and you've, you know, all of, that's all good. Right. So if you screw up now, if you screw up now, at least you can look back on 70, 80, 50, 60, however long years of purposeful, good living. Right. That's it. That's if you screw up your estate. Yeah, you blew the end of it, but hey, at least the, the other part was pretty good. What if you screw it up for a little kid, right? You see, what if you screw it up? What if, you, what if your kids screw it up for the grandkids? Now, I agree. I absolutely agree. Unlikely that they're going to die. Okay, but that's what life insurance is for because it happens. You don't believe it happens? Go to any hospital Saturday night. It happens. Okay, go to the stroke clinics. It happens. And when it happens, either you're ready for it or you're not ready for it. And the key is that with term life insurance, right, you'll be ready for it. And it's cheap. And if it's done correctly, and we'll get into that next segment, if it's done correctly, not the way everybody tells you to do it, but if it's done correctly, 
it can be such a blessing for the kids. Now, hopefully you never need it. I get that. But here's the here's the bottom line. It works. It will work. Your term and life insurance will still fund the college, the house, the whatever else if you're not there. See? So that's, that's the thing. If you got kids, got little kids, got grandkids, you got to be thinking about this stuff. Okay? There you are. You're listening to The David Carrier Show. I'm David Carrier, your family's personal attorney. Welcome back to the David Carrier Show. I'm still David Carrier, your family's personal attorney. Call me Grandpa Dave if you'd like to. I won't take offense, I promise. Anyway, uh, 616-774-2424. That's 616-774-2424. So here's the bottom line. Who should do estate planning? Everybody. Who has the greatest stakes in doing estate planning? Right? For whom... Is it the most important? And I say parents of young children. Parents of young children, why? Because if the parents of young children screw up their estate plan, right? Right? You screw up your estate plan. You just leave it to the kids or whatever stupid thing everybody else is telling you to do, which is stupid, and you go ahead and do it, your kid's going to be on crack. Your daughter's going to be on the pole. You know what I'm saying? It's terrible. Terrible. And ask anybody who's seen it. It's terrible. You don't want to do that. They don't want to do that. It's wrong. If you screw up your estate plan, you're older, your kids are grown, right? You screw up your estate plan. What does that mean? What does that mean? It What that means? <laughs> Get, I'm ahead of myself here. What that means is, what that means is, right? Your last years are a misery, right? You condemn your spouse to nursing home poverty, right? Because you used it all up. You went nuts first. You know, you got the dementia first. OK. And now they're killing themselves, keeping you out of the nursing home, which is fine, which is good. Keep, keep out of nursing home, but don't kill yourself doing it. Not when there's PACE available, waiver program available, all kind of other stuff available. Right. And without impoverishing yourself. See, that's what I that, in case you didn't know, that's what I bang in the gong for around here. Don't go broke. Yeah. Do you need to care? Yeah, you do. All right. According to the federal government, and I know we don't trust the federal government, but they say 70% of folks at age 65, you get a 70% chance, three years average of skilled care. Somebody's got to provide that. Maybe it's a nursing home, assisted living, somebody at home. Okay. And this is what everybody's ignoring. It, it just drives me around the bend. And the older you get, the greater the percentage. Because you know what? Some people died and you're getting older. All right. That's at age 65, you have a 70% chance. And the percentage just goes up from there. Okay. So that's what, and, and if you screw it up, there'll be Medicaid available for you. Okay. You're not going to live in a gutter, but you won't have any choices and you won't leave anything to your kids and you'll impoverish your spouse. These seem like, <laughs> these seem like important things to me, but at least, at least you got your kids launched. Do you see your kids are adults. You know, they might, oh, yeah, poor mom is stuck in the, oh, yeah, too bad they can't do something. Blah, 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 blah. You know, that's the kind of things that they say. Yeah, too bad. They don't say, oh, let me dig into my retirement plan. They don't say, oh, let me give up going on vacation. They don't say, oh, I don't really need a roof for the house or a furnace either, or a new car or a used car, new used car, whatever. They don't say that. Nobody says that. You know, it's like, oh, too bad. I'm, you know, thank goodness that there's a base level of care available. All right. And our whole thing is, hey, guess what? You spent your life purposeful, right? Intentional, doing things the right way. OK, why not leave something for the kids? What What, what are you waiting for? Christmas? Come on now. OK, but that's for you. You see, if you if you're older, kids are grown and you screw up your estate plan. Right. The crap comes back on your head, your head. Not somebody else's. You already raised the kids. You did the good job. Yeah, I'm not, very good. Very good. Okay. But if you've got little kids, it comes back on theirs. Do you see? That's why I think it's so important uh, for parents of young children to be getting this planning done. Okay. Not it's less likely to happen. I admit that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, when you're 80, you know, you're in your 70s, 80s, things are gonna happen. Yeah. Probability goes way up, right? Severity goes way up. 
but at least it's happening to you. If it, you see what I'm saying, All right? Your chickens are coming home to roost on you, not somebody else. Now, when you got little kids, less chance. I understand that. Less chance. Oh, I'll never die. Yeah, you don't even buckle your seatbelt. What are you talking about? Okay. All right. So the consequences fall on your kids. That's why I think it's important for parents of young children to get their house in order. Less likely, huge consequence, and somebody else has taken the consequence of that. Okay. So what do we do? Well, first of all, an awful lot of what you hear is just flat, ignorant, wrong, whatever you want to say. All right. Because people aren't focused on uh, the, the small kids, right? And families with small children. You know, oh, all you need is a will. All you need is this. Hey, listen, a will is a hell of a lot better than nothing. It's a lot better than nothing. But the way they're done is so bad, it's like it's almost worse because. And then and then they do the beneficiary designations on the IRAs and the insurance and stuff. Oh, I'm going to avoid probate. You idiot. Why do you, if you're going to do a will, yeah, you're going to go through probate on those assets that are covered by the will. Yes, you will. Okay. All right. Yeah, fine. Fine. You want to do that. It's less expensive. There's less. Okay. But then why would you circumvent that will? You did the cheapo will. I get it. You circumvent it with the with the uh, IRAs and the in the life insurance, which means that when your kid's 18, 18 years old, they get the life insurance and the IRA. <laughs> what the what are you thinking? All right. So I don't care if you do a will or you do a trust. Either way, when you got minor children, you got to split out those assets. You got two kinds of assets going on. You've got what I call conventional assets. They're also called non-tax qualified, non-qualified assets. They mean non-tax qualified assets. These are things like your house, like life insurance, like investments, okay? You got those. And then you've got qualified assets. These would be your IRA, your 401k, 403b, 457, thrift savings plan, railroad retirement, you know, all those things that you did to plan ahead, all those tax advantage things tax qualified money, right? And they're different and they need to be treated differently, okay? Nobody does that. They just, oh, put a beneficiary on there. Oh, do a ladybird deed. Man, are you kidding me? And and it's only because, it's only because of the absolute abysmal, you know, I was gonna say ignorance. I don't know if it's ignorance, what, what is it? What do, what do you call it when there's something out there, you can see it. There it is, right? There's no denying. Well, I guess there is denying. Um, but but you can see it and you still cling to this idea that, oh, avoiding probate is the thing or this other thing is the thing. And if you can avoid probate some other way, then you've accomplished your goal. When avoiding probate was never the goal, avoiding probate was a stepping stone to achieving the goal. Does that make sense? People get this idea that, oh, if I have avoid probate, I win. No, you don't. No, you don't. Avoiding probate is like putting on the putting on the track shoes. Okay. You know, you got you got your you get your or or get, getting your tools or something like that, right? It's not the it's not the be all and end all. It's not the end. It's a means to the end. It's a feature of how do you most effectively accomplish your ends, accomplish your goals. It's not a goal. And everybody mixes this up. And lawyers, worst of all, you know, I think. So we'll be talking about that as we as we go through here. But uh, and I've got a I've got a uh, Facebook post from a retired attorney. It just displays the absolute brute. I don't know what you want to call it. I don't know if ignorance is really the right word. Maybe there's a better word for it. Maybe you can help me out with that. But I'll read it to you. I'll tell you what I think of it. And you guys can tell me what, uh, what <laughs> you tell me what the right word is. You've been listening to the David Carrier Show. I'm Grandpa Dave, your family's personal attorney. Welcome back to the David Carrier Show. I'm David Carrier, your family's personal attorney. And uh, indeed, this is the place uh, to give us a call. Why don't you? 
616-774-2424. If we could make it easier, we would. I just don't know. I don't know how. But you could always uh, you can always drop us an email, you know, if uh, if you want to drop an email, david at davidcarrierlaw.com. And at uh, davidcarrierlaw.com, there's all kinds of good information. So, you know, it's not just, um, well, you know, it's all good. It's all good stuff. Can I, what, can I, what can I tell you? <clears throat> Plus on the website, we have all the uh, upcoming workshops. You know, we've re-engineered the workshops so that they're, um, we, we've actually managed to cut the cost. Uh, of doing this stuff about in half, uh, depending on what you need, maybe two thirds. Um, it's one of those uh, come to workshop. We will, or if you have a question about it, give me give me a call. I'll explain um, the way we've uh, the way we've done it. Uh, faithful listeners know that we take a lot more time with folks than most attorneys do, and you know, depending on how you do that. And I always thought one on one was the only way to do that. Um, that led to you know, significantly increased costs vis-a-vis other people. Now we do more of this than most other folks, but still in all, you know, it's a, you know, I'm not denying it's expensive. So um, we've been trying to figure out a way to bring the cost down and now we've done it. So uh, if you have a question about that, give us a call, come to the workshop, go to the website, uh, leave us a message, uh, email david at davidcarrierlaw.com if you've got questions about any of this. And you know something, if you're wondering about what I'm talking about here for your kids, um, we do a whole thing with, uh, we do a whole thing with kids and, you know, we can do a a Zoom web shop or a web shop, a Zoom um, workshop. Um, Maybe we should call it a web shop. I don't know. Anyway, uh, (laughs) uh, we can do it in person or, uh, uh, you know, by the Zoom. But, But I just think it's so important for, uh, parents of young children, this is what I'm talking about today, parents of young children to get it straight. And I, I've said, I've talked about this before, but, you know, uh, one of my kids finally had a kid. Woo-hoo! So uh, I get to be a grandparent. That's, uh, that's I can't tell you how, how wonderful that is. Because uh, I don't even know how wonderful it is. It, it feels pretty good so far. We'll, we'll find out. It's only been a few hours. So we'll uh, <laughs> we'll find out. So number one, if you're older, we're worried about you. If you're younger and you've got young kids, we're worried about the kids, right? If you're older and you screw up your estate plan, you screwed up your own life, you screwed up your spouse's life. Well, you're in it together. If you let your spouse get away without doing planning, that's on you. So there's a there's an element of uh, you made the bed, lie in it, okay? When you don't do planning, when you're older and you don't do planning, it's your own freaking fault, Okay. And you're going to reap the consequences. Fair enough, right? I mean, isn't that, I mean, isn't that how life works? Isn't that how life is supposed to work? Right? But when you've got little kids and you screw up your estate plan, now the consequences of your failure, right, are visited on the kids. Here's what you should be doing. Instead of putting kids beneficiary designations or or here's the other one. Here's the one. That's that's like totally the worst. They've got you've got one kid who's like 18, right? So you put that kid on uh, or, or and I've seen older people do this, too. Uh, you put one kid on all the accounts because you think that that one kid is going to divvy up fair and then they don't. Right. Or you say, well, I'll give it to the oldest kid uh, and the younger kids are minors, but the older kid will take care of the younger kids. Uh, no, they won't. No, they won't. <coughs> I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm saying it just doesn't happen. And now you've screwed up the older kids' hope for getting any uh, scholarships or anything else because now they get all this money. It's like it's so short-sighted. Now, here's what you're going to do. Here's what we do when we've got minor children and we've got parents who've been contributing to the 401k, the IRA, what have you. Right, you've got two kinds of assets. This is what I was saying in the last segment. Two kinds of assets: tax qualified assets. These are assets with tax benefits built in, like IRAs and four hundred one ks and that kind of thing. And then you've got retirement plan assets. That that's what I'm talking about. And then you've got everything else. Okay, let's say you've got three kids. Do they have the same needs? Are they the same age? Even if they're the same age, you may have triplets. 
are they the same proclivities and all the rest? Of that? No, they're different. You haven't noticed this yet? Pay attention. Okay, your kids are different. They have different needs. One kid's got the, you know, <clears throat> one kid, you know, looks like Alfred E. Newman needs the uh, needs the uh, the orthodontia. Okay, the other kid doesn't. The other one looks like Barbie doesn't need the orthodontia. Okay. Well, you pay five thousand for orthodontia for braces and whatnot for one of the kids. You don't give the other kid five thousand bucks because oh, that'd be equal. But that's exactly what you're doing with your estate plan when you divvy it up equally, which is what everybody seems to think is a good idea, which is really terrible, bad idea. Okay, not a good idea to divide things up equally because equal is not fair. You don't do that. You know, when a kid breaks their arm. Do you, do you give the other ones 300 bucks for the deductible at the emergency room for the broken arm? Of course not. And why not? It'd be equal. Yeah, but there's, where's the fairness? No fairness. So here's what you do. Right? You got retirement plan assets, IRA, 401k. You got insurance, house savings. You got to treat them separately, differently. For the IRAs, for the IRAs, okay, 401k, 403b, for those, you do divide those equally. In trust, you don't just give it to the kid. In your will, if you want to do a will, okay, it's better than nothing, but put a trust in the will, you see? So that when the money comes out, it isn't hand a check to an 18-year-old, which is just so stupid. It makes me want to put my head through the wall, right? Again, <laughs> don't do that. Why, why would you do that? It's just crazy. So you do a trust. So now the kid gets the maximum tax benefit. If they have liabilities, right? And kids tend to have liabilities. Now the IRA is not given away for those liabilities. So that's the first thing that you do. You have to divide that equally to maximize, maximize the tax benefit each kid gets. All right. So that is equal. Not because it's fair, not because it's fair, but because that's what the tax law kind of dictates. All right. If you're going to maximize the benefit, everything else goes into the pot. It's another trust. OK, and this pot trust is held together for all of the kids to approximate what you would do if you weren't pushing up daisies. OK, are you with me on this? If you weren't worm food, how would you spend the money on your kids? Well, I'd give this one more than you know, the football player gets this and the ballerina gets that and the. Kid who likes watercolors gets whatever. So everybody gets what they want, okay? Everybody gets what they want, uh, and it's fair. It's not going to be equal. If you're not equal with your kids now, right? You know, they're different ages, if nothing else. You know, one of them's through college, the other one's starting high school. Come on now. You're not going to treat them equally, but you're going to treat them fairly, and so if we do the IRAs, we do that separately, equally, because that's maximum tax benefit. But then we hold everything else back, all the family resources for the benefit of each of the kids. But you got to put someone in charge of that who knows your family, knows you, knows your values. We can get into that a little bit more in the last segment. You're listening to The David Carrier Show. I'm David Carrier, your family's personal attorney. Welcome back to the David Carrier Show. I'm David Carrier, your family's personal attorney. Um, so I'm just going to kind of recap here. Um, first of all, my good news is my, uh, oh, 616 forget that. 616-774-2424. Uh, if you'd like to get your question, comment, or concern on the air. Uh, how easy is that? Easy enough, right? Uh, drop me an email, david at davidcarrierlaw.com. Uh, but my uh, uh, my daughter just uh, just had a kid. And uh, so finally, you know, I got four kids of my own. And finally, one of them produces. Yay. Reproduces. <laughs> or I don't care how you put it. Anyway, uh, so now I got a grandkid. So I'm very excited about that. So we spent the whole past hour uh, talking about what do you got to do when you got little kids? And it's different, right? It, our focus is usually on how do you hang on to what you got? Well, why not? Uh, but when you've got little kids, it's a whole new level of responsibility. You know this. And, um, you know, so for parents of small children, 
more important, in my opinion, more important that they get it done because now you're visiting consequences of your failure to act. Uh, those are those are visited on your children, not you. Right. So if y'all don't do your estate planning, you know, faithful listeners, then uh, who bears the consequence? You and your spouse. That's who. OK, if you're a parent of minor children and you don't plan your estate, who bears the who bears the consequence? The kids. And they're much pro more profound consequences. All right. Your daughter's on the stripper pole and your son's a meth head. Great. Thank you very much for, for doing such a good estate plan. Yeehaw. So here's how you do it. You separate out the tax qualified assets is in one pile. That's a trust. OK, we're, we're going to multiply trusts here. Now, understand that when it comes to giving stuff to the next generation, the way to do it is to deliver the assets in trust. This is my opinion. And there's some, you know, people don't know what they're talking about, say other stuff, but they, there always are. No, no surprise there. So you, you put it in trust for the benefit of the minor kids and you do it separately, you know, equal shares of the tax advantaged assets, the IRAs and 401ks. Why? Because that's how you maximize the tax benefit. That's it. It's a government thing. All right. So once you've done that, then the question is, what do we do with everything else? And the, what you do is you put all of that together until the youngest one. And I say age 25. It's up to you. But until the youngest child hits age 25, you hold all of those other assets together. Life insurance, proceeds from the sale of the house, retirement, uh, not retirement plan assets, but um, investment accounts. Okay, that kind of your savings account, your checking account, all that stuff you hold together. Okay, why do you hold it together? Because your kids aren't equal, right? Distributing to your kids equally is not fair to anybody. Don't do it. Bad idea. Your kids have different needs. You already know that. And they may have different needs based on talents, abilities, far beyond those of mortal men, talents and abilities, uh, age, accomplishments, all kinds of things. Those are things are different, right? Kids are different. And the money, if you divide the pie equally, you're going to be unfair. You know this. This is happening right now. Well, excuse me, if you have minor kids, what happened when you had minor kids? When your kids were little. You didn't give them all exactly the same amount for crying out loud. You know, it doesn't it doesn't work that way. That's not how it works. Never has. And so why after you're gone, most traumatic thing. Now, the, the kid who's five years into his career because he's older, right, gets the same money that the kid who's just starting college gets. What? How did that get to be fair? What's good about that? All right. You, you, you know, the older kid had, what, two years, four years, 10 years, five years, whatever. More support from you because you were still alive and kicking. Well, you're gone now. Right. And so what? We're going to give up on that. All of a sudden that becomes a bad idea. No, no. You want your estate plan to mimic to the extent possible to reproduce you and your spouse. Right. And by holding that money together, having somebody older and wiser, spending that money for the benefit of the kids, right? Until the youngest one's feet, I always say, call it, feet are on the path. See, that's your job as a parent. Your job as a parent is not to make life easy. And I saw one of these ads. It makes me sick. It turns my stomach. It was like, oh, remember, you'll always have a place to come home to. No, you won't. Get the hell out. <laughs> get out <laughs> come back and visit that'd be nice you know my dad had a thing about you know fishing guests whenever you whenever you show and he liked you around a little bit longer but you know his whole thing well you know the thing about fishing guests you know they both start to stink after a few days yeah got it dad you know um you don't want your kid coming home my goodness what a failure as a parent oh yeah there's always a you know your bed is made baloney <laughs> we turn that into a library or an office or your mom's quilting room. That's what they did. It. That's what my mom and dad did. They turned the room into the quilting room. Anyway, point being, right, get out and stay out. But it is your job as a parent, I believe, to put the kids' feet on the path, right, and to supply the things that are necessary to do that. 
Why not? What's so bad about that? Oh, that's the job as a parent. So why are you doing things like dumping a ton of money on an 18-year-old? How the hell is that going to get their feet on the path? I'll tell you, get them on the path to perdition. That's what it'll do. Don't do it. Don't let your kids do it to your grandkids either, for crying out loud. Right? And you don't have to, you don't have to do the the living trust. You don't have to set that. But but in the estate plan, in the will, create trusts. You know, if 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 that's a uh, if that's a thing for you, whatever. But the last thing you want to do is put beneficiaries on the deed or title. I'm going to get to this idiocy from this retired lawyer. I mean, it just makes my skin crawl when I read this stuff because then you got people who would probably have done it right, and then you get this this awful advice, terrible advice, you know, from somebody who positions himself as, oh, I, I don't really know what's going on. I'll tell you the truth. It's like, what are you talking about? You know, only if you ignore most of reality do you get, anyway, I'll get that to the next segment. So if you've got little kids, right, or if you got new grandkids, huh, right, talk to the parents about how to get a will in place, right? Because who gets the kids? See, this is the other thing, right? If forget about the money. Who's going to raise these kids, right? Lots of times that's a difficult decision, very difficult decision. Who's going to raise the kids? What makes you think it would be a better decision if you left it up to probate court? Huh? I mean, what does the judge know? And you already know, you know, you've got that slick brother-in-law or whoever, right? Who, um, you know, uh, the slick one, right? Who's going to make a good presentation in court. Now they've got your grandkids. Or it's like, what? You know, you only wanted the insurance money. You know that. All right, whatever. So don't do that. Say who you want to get your kids. That's really important. Okay, and just do it right. That's the that's what I'm saying. It's always better to get some input, and it's best to do it sensitively and sensibly. And you can do it, but you can't do it if you put kids' names on stuff. All right, that's bad when they're 40 years old. It's even worse when they're four years old, you know, kind of hoping. I don't even know what people are thinking because what the probate court's going to do is they're going to take the money, kind of lock it up, right, kind of. And then when they're 18, they get a check. It's like, who, in, in, what, in what alternate dimension does that make any sense? I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. But you got people saying stuff like this. And uh, like I say, this is beautiful because I got this, uh, I got this, uh, uh, post from a from a retired attorney claims to be a retired attorney. You know, I'll tell you the truth. Well, we'll get into that in the uh, in the next segment. In the meantime, drop me an email, David at davidcarrierlaw.com. Go to the website, davidcarrierlaw.com. Uh, or, you know, put together a question and ask me in the next segment. I'll be uh, I'll be right back. You're listening to the David Carrier Show. Hello and welcome to the David Carrier Show. I'm David Carrier, your family's personal attorney, and you have found the place where we talk about estate planning, elder law, real estate, and business law. So give us a call, why don't you? 616-774-2424. That's area code 616-774-2424. We'll get your question, comment, or concern on the air. So uh, as uh, as of 517 this morning, I'm a grandfather. <laughs> Been waiting for that one for a while. And uh, so that's all good. And uh, so we spent the first hour talking about uh, the importance of parents of young children getting their estate plan together and sort of the ways to uh, to do that. It's not as simple as you think, but it's not as bad as you think uh, either. Uh, I would say the most important thing to do is uh, has to do with the assets, really. Um you know, you're going to figure out who's going to raise the kids. That's important. Of course it is. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that with the assets, um, whether it's IRA, life insurance, what have you, if that's not done properly, then it gets delivered to the kids at age 18. Terrible. Terrible. You want to screw your kid up, right? Give them some new friends for about six months. And then six months later, when the money's gone, the new friends will be gone and the diseases will be there for a lifetime. Don't do it. All right. What are you thinking? All right. Don't don't you can take care of this. It's not that hard. OK, um, so that's 
you know, you can go re-listen to the uh, first hour if you'd like. Uh, I'd recommend it if you've got uh, little kids. Or if you've got kids with little kids, <laughs> as I do now. Um, so here's a here. I want to get to this other thing. Of course, you can always give us a call, and I wish you would, 616-774-2424 if you have a question, comment, or concern. Okay? Question, comment, or concern, then please, you know, please be uh, please please be sending out um or calling right 6167 yeah i'm a little distracted this morning sorry 6167742424 <laughs> uh, that's the uh, uh that's the number for you to call if you have any uh, if you have any questions now i got this um i got this post on a facebook thing you know inviting people to a workshop so we we put that out on the facebook and um this is so typical of the inexcusable. I think it's inexcusable ignorance, or I don't even know what motivates this kind of stuff. Okay. And I'm just going to take it apart for you. I'll read it to you and I'll just tell you what's going on. It, first of all, this guy says, as a retired attorney, I'll breach my fraternal oath. What? It's like, it's like, oh, I'm going to tell you the real stuff. It's like, what fraternal oath? I didn't take any fraternal oath. Are you talking about the conspiracy of silence that goes on among probate attorneys about what's really going on here? Is that what you're talking about? Oh, I'm going to breach the, you know, the code of, you know, the code of silence. Is that what you're saying? Because that's what it sounds like to me. There is no fraternal oath. All right. You don't take any oath to, to protect and defend other attorneys. You take an oath. I mean, you don't want to bring the the profession into obloquy or cast discredit on it by being a <laughs> by being a bad person. Yeah, that's bad. Okay, but but you don't. You know, faithful listeners know. Uh, I don't have any problem pointing out what what the what the issue is with current estate planning. It's terrible. It's a scam. It's awful. It's just horrible the way it's being done. So as a retired attorney, it's like, what, what is he saying? It's like, I was too too chicken, you know what, to chicken shit is what I was going to say. And, you know, I might as well say it um, I'm, to, to tell you when I was practicing. But now that I'm retired, I can I can tell you the truth. Is that what he's saying? I mean, what? It's just God it's just annoys. Then it, so so then he goes on. Save your time and money. If you're rich, hire a lawyer. Okay, what is he saying here? If if you're not rich, you can do it yourself. Well, wait a second. If I was rich, then you can hire a lawyer. That's what it says. If you're rich, hire a lawyer. Because why? Because if you've got less than rich, and I don't even know what he means by rich, but you have less than rich, then throw the money out the window because it doesn't mean anything. I mean, what kind of what kind of screwed up perspective has this guy got? Or well, he's telling you what screwed up. Number one, he thinks he's got a code of silence not to tell you the truth until he's retired. Until he's retired, he owes it to other lawyers not to tell you what's really going on. But now that he's retired and it's all safe, well, now he'll tell you the truth. Thank you for <laughs> thank you for nothing. You know what I mean? It's like so. So he went through a whole career being more loyal to other attorneys than he was to his clients? Is that what he's saying? Ugh. And then it's like, uh, you know, if you're rich, then he says, if you're rich, hire a lawyer. Well, wait a second. Why? Because only only rich people deserve to get things done correctly. Is that it? What, what's going on? It says, if your estate is, your, and, then, and then he explains this misbegotten, this, this absolutely bizarre view of the world. If your estate is your house and car and savings account, savings account, and pension, put your beneficiary on your deed or titles. Oh my God, time to put my head through the wall again. It's like, why would you do that? Why would you put your kids on the title to your house? What if you want to sell your house? What what now, Mr. Mr. Code of Silence Breaker? Mr. I'm gonna tell you the truth. It's it's like it's it's so brain dead, it's not even funny. Right? And now your kids gotta sign off. He doesn't even talk about the, you know, Lady Bird deeds and stuff like that. You know what I mean? And there's other ways to do this without putting your kids on the title, right? Where you can transfer it to them on death. Now, that's not a good idea. <laughs> not a great idea. But, but I mean, there, there you are. 
there you you know there you are um and then uh so so this is what he says put your beneficiary it's like without any control just put their name on it i guess also probate is pretty simple unless you're rich where do you get that from it says you needn't avoid probate okay in every county in michigan right i think i think that's accurate uh, at least all the ones we've we've seen. And and I had one of the paralegals go check and they said, yeah, it's it's on every count. This this is true in every county. So we'll see. Maybe you can come up with one where it's not true. But I believe it to be true. They're, they have websites. Counties have websites. OK. And on the county website, you can go to the probate court section. And on every probate court section. There's a letter from the judge, from the probate judge, the chief judge of the probate court in that county. And in there somewhere in that letter, it's it encourages people not to try probate without an attorney. Now, what the heck does the judge care? Right. What does the judge care? Like our own judge Murkowski here in Kent County, Judge Murkowski. Right. He's got a thing about how um, uh, I can't quote it. I, I, I'll quote it. I mean, we've quoted it before, but I'll find the letter. I'll quote it to you. But it's like, you know, it's really a false economy because you don't know what's going on. And the people behind the counter at the probate court can't tell you. You know, there's a big sign up there. It says, we're not lawyers. Our, our clerks are not lawyers. You know, if you need advice, go get a lawyer. And people try to do this stuff. And it's like, uh, it's pretty simple. Pretty simple for who? If you're a plumber, putting a toilet in is pretty simple, right? Have you ever put a toilet in? It actually is pretty simple. It's not that hard, right? Conceptually, it's not that hard. But try doing it, all right? You'll take all freaking day. Take the plumber 15 minutes. Takes you all day. And then it leaks. Oh, the wax ring. <laughs> you know, I mean, try doing it yourself. It might work out, but it might might not. But in like I say, in every county, you've got the letter from the probate court saying, "Don't try, don't try to do this yourself," right? Because it puts a huge burden on the court. It gets screwed up, and that's how you get these Donny Brooks that go on forever and a day. You see, if you're involved in probate and you've got a halfway decent attorney who's helping you through it, you say, "Well, that was easy." Well, <laughs> there's a guy who walked a tightrope across the Grand Canyon or the World Trade Center or something like that. You know what I mean? You know, good good luck. You get up on a tightrope and see how easy it is. They make it look easy. Well, it ain't that easy. That's my point. Okay. And then you get somebody who's been in the, pro apparently, apparently, you know, apparently he's been pulling the wool over people's eyes because of his fraternal oath, which is less like, what are you talking about? There's no fraternal oath. Code of silence, whatever. Anyway. Uh, it says you needn't, quote unquote, avoid probate. You need not. Well, that's true. You need not. And in fact, there will be occasions when we do plans that specifically take advantage of probate. Oh, there's the music. Well, we'll be right back. You've been listening to The David Carrier Show. I'm David Carrier, your family's personal attorney. Welcome back to the David Carrier Show. I'm David Carrier, your family's personal attorney. We've got Simon on the line. Simon, welcome to the David Carrier Show. How are you? Working and working, man. Having a ball. You? Good, good. I have a question for you. Fire away. What I have now, I have uh, all of my accounts, benefic beneficiaries on all of them, yep. in different percentage. Okay. Yep. If anything happens to me, all what they should have to be able to do is get a different certificate, take it to all the accounts, and get their percentage that they have common. Yep. Uh, do you see anything wrong with that? Yep. There's there's two okay. problems. Yeah. There's there's really two problems with it. Um, the first is, what about you? What about Simon? Okay. Um, I'm guessing these are accounts with your name on them, and. They're been yeah, no, 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 but yeah. right now, yeah, yeah, they get your name on them. And we wouldn't do it that way um, because, and I don't know, I, I don't know what we're talking about, but my, my first thing is always protect it for the person who earned the money, okay? So we do these trusts 
that uh, asset protection trust, Medicaid divestment trust, whatever you want to call them, so that if Simon needs long-term care, then the money in these trusts doesn't count, doesn't count against you. So instead of you having to spend it down at, I don't know, $200 a day, $300, $400 a day for long-term care, instead of that, then you get a benefit. The, the money that you paid in to the system comes back to you, okay? Everyone else is benefiting, but not the, not the people who actually pay for it because you've typically been an idiot and actually saved money. Oh my God, well, how, how bad is that? Save money. Well, if you do, then you're not qualified. Now you're qualified for social security, no problem. Qualified for Medicare, no problem. But when it comes to long-term care, now you're not qualified for that. So in order to get you qualified for the things that you've already paid for, we use trusts to say that's number one. So we take care of Simon first. The second thing though is, and this is secondary, not first, but second, is how do I get the leftovers to the kids? Well, you can do beneficiary designations if you want to quote unquote, avoid probate. And people think, oh, avoiding probate is the thing. But here's the problem with that. Frequently, not every single time, I'm not saying every single time, but frequently your kids have got issues. All right. Sometimes they get divorced. Uh, that only happens half of the time. Sometimes they, you know, over uh, overspend on the credit cards. Sometimes they've got tax debt. Sometimes this, sometimes that. There's all kinds of sometimes there's child support. Sometimes there's uh, marital support. Sometimes there's all kinds of stuff goes on in the world. OK. And when you put kids as beneficiary, what you're saying is here's the money. Boom. Now, if you owe the money to anybody, you're not going to get this inheritance. It's going to go to the person that you owe money to. Now, you could make a judgment. You say, well, fair enough. Yeah, I don't want my kid to get the money. If my kid owes money to somebody, then, you know, my my uh, I like my daughter-in-law, my ex-daughter-in-law better than I like my kid. Great. Let's give her the money. All right. If that's what you want to do. I mean, who am I to say no? But most of the time, that's not how people think about it. They would just as soon have the inheritance be the, the ladder out of the pit for the kid. But it doesn't work that way if you do the beneficiary designations. Instead, what and this is what I've been doing for 30 years. Instead, what we do is we say to the kid, hey, kid, dad has died, left you this money. Here's There's a trust created by the will, by the trust they already set up, whatever. OK, however you want to do that. And you have the, basically, you have the option. Now, there's, I'm not getting into the legal technical side of things. But if you leave it alone, if you're in a bankruptcy, divorce, lawsuit, prison, whatever, they can't touch this money because of the way dad set it up. You can touch it all you want. Do whatever you want with it. Okay, that's, that's fine. And I'm not describing how that works, but as a practical matter, that's the reality. Um, and it's completely safe. If the kid needs long-term care, if the kid gets divorced, that kind of thing, now the money that you saved for the benefit of the kid is protected. So I say that there are two reasons, two levels on which this beneficiary designation stuff is just crap. The first is it doesn't protect it for Simon, okay, because the assets are in your name. I'll be dead then, though. Yeah, you're dead. So why don't you leave it to me? I got a new grandkid. I could use the money. <laughs> well, yeah. if you don't care, see, if you don't care where it goes, well, then you don't care. But you know what? I've made that offer to many, many people over the years. No one has taken me up on it. Yeah. So you care. You care a little bit. You know, whether or not your kids get what you have, what they have coming, what you're leaving to them, well, what it I matters. What I to do is make it as I was trying to make it as simple as possible, you know, when I'm gone. I get that. But here, mm -hmm. I, Einstein said everything should be as simple as possible, but not more simple. See, we've, yeah. we've had any number of kids who, thank God, that because they were going through a bankruptcy or a messy divorce or they were, you know, these things happen and you can't predict it. And sometimes you don't even know it because the kids don't tell you. 
they're about to get divorced sure. or that they they're going through a bankruptcy or something like that. You know, there's things you if you know, you know, but lots of times people don't know. And and then instead of the kid being. You know, you know, think about think about how that would be. Let's say you were in debt up to your eyeballs. Right. And then dad dies. And it's like, oh, boy, finally, you know, I get a little breathing room. But no, I don't because the beneficiary designation means I get the money, which means my creditors get the money. I, 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 mm-hmm. You know, they would have to know about that. He's inherited something, wouldn't they? Yeah. He she. Yeah. And, and that's what's called a creditor's exam. So you get a judgment against somebody. And one of the questions you ask is, what money do you have and what money do you have coming in? Okay. You know, and and, that, and you can get all that stuff reported, you know, no secrets like anymore. Like in the legal news or something like that? Well, it wouldn't it wouldn't be in the it wouldn't be in the legal news, but once the once the kid gets the money, okay, then they have an obligation to to report that. Right? And hmm. there it goes. You you have to report everything you inherit? No, 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 no. Well, no. What I'm saying is if you're in that situation, in the divorce, oh, okay. in the creditor, in the bankruptcy situation, then you do. Yeah, if you owe. Yeah. Yeah, if you owe. That and that's that's yeah. what I'm saying. You you can you can make it part of what you're doing, right? To protect the kids. And maybe it doesn't matter. And this guy's like, oh, if you're rich, do it. Hey, hey, listen. If your kids in a and I don't know, obviously I have no idea what your net worth is or anything like that, or your kids are I have no idea. But if your kids between a rock and a hard place, you think twenty thousand dollars, which is a relatively small inheritance, but twenty thousand dollars, you know, that's a year and a half of rent somewhere. Not a great place, but twenty thousand dollars can be an absolute lifeline. Let alone a hundred or two hundred, or you know, depending on what you've depending on what you got, but but the the bitterness of just seeing it flash by, it's like oh here it is, whoop, take it away, here it is, whoop, <laughs> nope, you lost it. It's like eh. well, you made, you made me a smarter man today. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for calling, Simon. That's a great question. Yeah, appreciate it. You bet. You've been listening to the David Carrier Show. I'm David Carrier, your family's personal attorney. Give us a call, why don't you? 616-774-2424. If life were simple, the answers would be simple. <laughs> it's not always that simple. Welcome back to the David Carrier Show. I'm David Carrier, your family's personal attorney. And you have found the place where we talk about estate planning, elder law, real estate, and business law. So give us a call, why don't you? 616 616- 774-2424 will get your question, comment, or concern on the air. Now, you may have been told, like Simon was, that, uh, oh, the thing to do is beneficiary designations on your accounts. Well, typically, if you're getting that kind of advice, you're also getting the advice that you don't need to plan ahead for yourself. Uh, <laughs> faithful listeners know that uh, that's the big deal, right? Um, it's your stuff. Why not hang on to it? You know, there's one of the uh, one of the financial advisors there. You know, keep your money safe. Yeah, great, keep it safe. Well, the big threat is not the market. Let me clue you: the big threat is not the market uh, or annuities or whatever else. I mean, there's all kinds of financial strategies out there. I don't claim to know much about those. I don't claim to, even though, of course, I am so smart. I know all about that stuff. Oh yeah, right. But I don't claim to. Anyway, the point is. Uh, whatever you've got it invested in, why not hang on to it against the threat that is most common? Most common according to who? Most common according to National Institute of Health. That's who, which is long-term care, dementia, all that kind of stuff. I know it'll never happen to you. That's fine. Uh, but because there's a 70% chance of it, okay, uh, it, I guess it'll happen to everyone else on your block, but not you. Okay, fine. That's the... That's your risk analysis. So that's the way you want to look at it. But the point of the, the point is, the fact of the matter is that, that this is how regular folks go broke. All right. Very few people able to pay twelve, fifteen thousand dollars a month for skilled care. And then less if it's uh, you know, might o- might only be six thousand. 
Hey, you know, two hundred dollars a day. Well, wouldn't that be great? Only, <laughs> only uh, six thousand a month. We, uh, but for most folks, it's more. You know, if, especially if it's skilled care, it's more twelve to fifteen thousand residential care. So it's expensive. It breaks people. This is what happens. And if you haven't addressed that issue, how can you possibly claim to be doing estate planning? Right. I mean, it's the most basic thing there is. Seems like to me, pretty basic. Hang on to your own stuff. And then uh, and then once you've done that, once you've used your money for you, for your spouse during your lifetime, which is why you earned it, I think. I kind of think so. Right? Once you've done that, then the question is, how do I benefit the people I leave behind? You know, and what Simon said was, hey, listen, when I'm dead, what do I care? And my response to that for 30 years has been, oh, if you don't care, give it to me. I I'll, I promise I'll be grateful. <laughs> and of course, no one's ever done that. Why not? Well, because maybe you do care. Maybe not a ton, but a little bit. And besides, the the goal here is not the goal, the point, the purpose, the intention, the overarching big story, the big idea here is to, in my opinion, is not how do you leave it to the kids, but how do you hang on to it for you? And if we've done it for you and your spouse. So if we've done that, if we've done that, right, if we hung on to it, now there's a there's leftovers, right? You didn't actually go broke. You weren't penniless at death. Right, your spouse wasn't impoverished. You actually had enough to take care of your, yourself. To your choices mattered. All the rest, and then what do we do with the leftovers? Well, give it to the church if you want to, or some other worthy charity or whatever. I'm fine with that. It's your money. Do what you want with it. Throw it out the window. Burn it in a bonfire. But I haven't seen very many people over the years who actually are willing to do that. That's not what people do. And they'd leave it to their family. Well, I'm fine with that too. Great. It's your money. You earned it. Do what you want with it. You know, whatever cause you're into, fine. You know, is it the Nature Conservancy? Is it NRA? Is it uh, uh, whatever? You know, give it to the Children's Hospital. I guess they're building another one. Do you hear that? They're building another Children's Hospital. I guess there weren't enough hospitals for children as it was. Anyway, point is, do whatever you want with it. But and if you want to burn it up, fine. Put that in your will. Uh, when I die, burn burn everything. I don't, I don't know if you get it enforced, but anyway, you could do it. So my point is that if you are going to leave it to somebody, why not do it in a way that's characteristic of the way you've lived your life? Because if you're older, 70s, 80s, right? If you're older, 60s, 70s, 80s, and you're thinking about the leftovers to the kids, right? If you're thinking about that, what that tells me is you're one of those people who didn't live life on a credit card, right? You're one of those people who didn't blow it. As soon, you're one of those people who had uh, more money than month and you actually saved. Great. You did that. Okay. So you're that kind of person. You're the kind of person who actually works and saves and does all those good things. Wonderful. Right. Why would you be so inconsistent with the values that guided you through life at death? Why? Why? I, I'm I'm not getting it. I'm not I'm not understanding. You know, if if you've been a blessing to other people around you, why would you continue to do that with the leftovers? And the beneficiary designation doesn't do that. It's blind. It's blunt force. It's this is how it goes and it doesn't go some other way. And if I want to stop and and look around and say, hey, you know, beneficiary designation. Yeah, I, I kind of if everybody's if every day is a sunny day, if everybody's happy, jolly, if nothing's gone wrong with anybody. <laughs> if you're living in the land of Oz, wonderful, great. Then beneficiary designations, you know, you wouldn't hear me complain about it. But that's not the world we live in. There's no world I live in anyway. Not the world my clients live in. All right. We live in a world where things happen and they're not all run rosy and sunny and super duper. Sometimes bad things happen. And when they do happen, 
you've either prepared for it or you've done a beneficiary designation, which means you haven't prepared at all, which gets me back to this idiot. You know, I got a I got a posting on Facebook from a from a retired attorney. Right. And if you weren't here before, let me just it starts off with as a retired attorney, I'll breach my fraternal oath. It's like nobody took an oath. Uh, uh, there is no code of silence about not. Now, some people may feel it or they may think that their bread is buttered on the side where you, they lie to clients or they they have uh, fraternal oaths or something like this. I just I just it, it's just. Uh, I can't even tell you. It's like, And now I'm retired, so I'll tell you the truth. It's like, what? What? I, I, I can't even describe my contempt for somebody who says now that I'm safe, you know, now I'll tell you the truth. Oh, yeah. I'm more interested in people tell me the truth when they've got something at risk, right? It's like, oh, now I have nothing at risk. I'll, now I'll tell you. It's like, okay, you're a coward. I get it, you know? And so why would I, you know, what other agenda do you have going on? I mean, that's just where my mind goes. Anyway, and so his advice to people is save your time and money. If you're rich, then hire a lawyer. Because, you know, uh, because if you're rich, you don't get a second chance, Right. Because it's all about the money. It's not about the people. See, if you're rich, here's the thing. The wealthier you are, the less you need lawyers. The less you need lawyers. Why? Because the lawyers are there to get you an edge. That's the point of what we're doing here. We're trying to get you an edge. Okay? Well, if you got a lot of money and you blow it, well, you still have plenty of money, right? If you're rich, what do you need the lawyer? What do you need the edge for? But if you don't have that much, if you have what people have from working and saving and doing all the good things, we better make that money work as hard as we possibly can, right? You need the edge. You're the ones who need the edge, not the wealthy people. If Bill Gates lost $500 million, would he notice? <laughs> would he even know? Of course not. All right, if a wealthy person loses half a million dollars, well, yeah. if you lose half a million dollars, what does that mean? Disaster. So who am I supposed to be more concerned about? The wealthy guy who can afford to take the hit or the regular person who needs to hang on to every nickel and make the buffalo bellow? Okay, you know, squeeze that nickel to the buffalo bellows. That's what you should be doing. That's what I think. Um, you may have a different opinion on it, but that is that's where I'm coming from. May not like it, but there it is. You've been listening to the David Carrier Show. I'm David Carrier, your family's personal attorney. Welcome back to the David Carrier Show. I'm David Carrier, your family's personal attorney. Uh, you can still call me, 616-774-2424, but uh, the clock is ticking. Um, I just want to get through this uh, this thing uh, retired attorney posted on Facebook. And you know, now that he's retired and safe, he's going to, now tell us all the truth. And um, just, I don't know. I mean, why do people do this? Um, you know, if you're going to tell me the truth, tell me the truth when it's hard to tell me the truth, not when you're safe and you think there's no consequences to it. It's just, <laughs> I mean, where do people come up with this stuff? Anyway, um, so it's all about putting doing beneficiaries. And now it says, um, we already talked about that, but then it says probate is pretty simple unless you're rich. I don't understand that. It's not more complex if you're rich. I mean, there's more things to go through probate, but it doesn't become more complex. It's the same process. And it says you needn't, quote unquote, avoid probate. No, but you should have a reason for doing it. You should be able to articulate that reason. Here's why I'm going through probate on purpose. So when we have uh, spouses, older, older folks, right, will frequently go through probate. We'll at least put it in there as a possibility in order to preserve the assets for the surviving spouse immediately, not after five years or whatever. We've got the five-year plan. We've got that. Those assets are protected. What about the rest of it? Okay. At the death of one of the spouses, we can protect the rest. And so we'll build that in, in an appropriate situation. We'll build that in. Now, in order to make it work, you got to go through probate. That's a reason. Okay. That's a motive. That's not just, uh, I'm brain dead. I'm, I want to avoid probate. No, no. Usually I do because it makes things easier. Yeah, I do. You know, it makes it possible to do things that aren't possible. That's not possible so much as it is that are more difficult. All right. 
uh, in going through probate on the thing. All right. So I wouldn't, uh, you know, in order to do a lot of the stuff, it's just easier uh, to avoid it. So avoiding probate is not a be all and end all. Avoiding probate is just common sense. Why would I give myself additional burdens if I didn't have to? Okay. That's the point. Uh, and then he says, it's not a boogeyman, right? That's right. It's not, I would agree with that part. You know, it's, you know, you shouldn't be, Ooh, probate. It's always terrible. It's not always terrible. And there are reasons for doing it, but it always has. Here's the thing. And you think somebody who'd been doing this for a while would understand, but apparently not. The point is that when you go through probate, it isn't always terrible. That's true. But it always has the potential. And it and it's a lot easier to have a Donnie Brook, a, a fight, a thing you can't, you know, very, very difficult situation in probate than outside. Okay. So if you've managed to avoid probate, right, then chances are things will go more smoothly. And the things that are easy to fight about in probate, much more difficult if you didn't already file the lawsuit against yourself. So that's what probate is. It's the lawsuit that you file against yourself for the benefit of your creditors. That's what it, you know, it, that's that's is what it is. You know, who benefits from probate? Right? Versus not. Versus you did a different kind of plan. Now, is it better you have to go through probate if if you haven't planned, you're going to. Um, but much better to have planned ahead and avoided probate. Not because I'm just trying to avoid probate because it's the boogeyman. No, no. I'm trying to avoid probate because it makes it easier for me to accomplish the things I want to accomplish. Okay? I got I I I'm not here to quote unquote avoid probate for the sake of avoiding probate. I'm here to avoid probate for the sake of accomplishing goals for my family. Then he says they've really made it pretty simple. Well, like I say, simple to an electrician is not simple to you. All right. Simple to an EMT is not simple to you. All right. I mean, if you've ever tried to do CPR or any of those things, you know, that maybe you've gotten the training for it or whatever. It's a world of difference between taking the class and actually making it happen. And the EMT to the EMTs, hey, it's nothing. The emergency medical technique, it's nothing. It's, yeah, you just do this. It just sees how simple it is. You know, okay, well, that's fine. That's your area of expertise, you know? So it's that lack of empathy of understanding where regular people are coming from that says, oh, it's it's so easy. What's the, you know, what's the problem? Here's the other, here's the other aspect of that. Who benefits from probate, right? So if you figure, and who knows what the numbers are, four to 10% of the estate, whatever it is, uh, goes to probate costs, and as I say, probate costs. Well, the majority of probate costs are the attorney fees in probate. Well, why would you give up that gravy train? Do you see? So when you've got somebody giving advice, right, the beneficiary designation is part of it. And it's like, okay, you're not protecting the people that you are leaving the stuff to. I, I suspect you do actually care a little bit more than perhaps you're willing to admit about that. Um, so you're not protecting them. You're not doing that in the best way possible. Um, all right. What else we got? And then it's like, oh, it's so simple to go through probate anyway. Well, who benefits from that? And who benefits from when the whole thing gets screwed up? Right. See, here's here's the thing. I We set things out. The way I put together a plan is so that my interest, and this is why we do fixed fee, it, it, and that it relates back to it. We do the fixed fee, so I have the same incentive that you do. My incentive is to get this done with everybody happy, you know, in the most efficient way possible. The more efficient I am, the more money I make. Oh, there's a surprise, huh? See, when you do a fixed fee, when you do the fixed fee, the interest is in making sure that you set up the plan so that things go smoothly. Chaos is not my friend. But if you're billing by the hour, think about this. If somebody's billing you by the hour, right? Chaos is their friend. Because what? Because now it's going to take a lot more time, which means a lot more what? 
fees. See? So if we can make it easy, if we can make it smooth, <laughs> well, maybe, maybe you want chaos after you're gone. I don't know. If you do, you don't need me. <laughs> I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be helpful. But, but if you want things nice and smooth, right? Then why not give me incentive to make things nice and smooth? Now sometimes they're not. Sometimes you just gotta deal with it. Okay, fine, you gotta deal with it. You know, you got hard hard cases. But most of the time you can make it smooth. If you put a plan in place that recognizes your basic values, if you put a plan in place, right, that really looks out for other people, right? Then you don't get this. Oh, beneficiary. De See, the thing with the beneficiary designation, it's like the only important thing is avoiding probate. The fact that it screws the kids up, well, that's fine. You know, and, and Simon was saying how, uh, you know, different percentages. Well, now you're telling everybody what the different percentages are. If you do it right with the trust, nobody needs to know how much anybody anyone else got. All they know is what they got. So that's my uh, that's my thought for the week. You've been listening to the David Carrier Show. I'm David Carrier, your family's personal attorney. Go to the website, davidcarrierlaw.com. Sign up for one of our free life plan workshops. We have really changed our approach to the whole thing. It's new, it's different, and it's a lot less expensive. So there you go.